Hey, you guys. So welcome to a little core and pelvic floor coffee chat with me. Um, so you all put in some really great questions in the poll inside my IG story. So if you've not been on my IG stories, now's the time to get in there so that you can get your questions answered. A little Q&A with me um, just so we can talk about the core and pelvic floor. So you all came up with some really good questions. I have them here that I'm going to answer really quickly. And if it's not a question that I'm directly answering, then I can guide you on my IG feed so that you can find those things and you can start making progress towards your core and your pelvic floor, okay? So IG, I feel is so fast, right? You, you got all these posts coming at you, reels and all the other stuff. So I thought this would be fun for us to do more little coffee chats um, and little Q and A's so that um, I can slow things down a little bit, explain these things to you so that you can truly understand it and you can get stronger towards your goals. So if you like that, let me know down in the comments and I'll plan to do more of these in 2022. All right, cool. So let's get right into it. So the first question that someone had is, how do you breathe under a brace when exercising? Um, so that is good. So this is a, clearly a person who has been doing their homework <laughs> to even know what breathing under the brace is. So essentially what breathing under the brace is, is learning how to contract those deep core muscles, draw them in, and then exercise while keeping those muscles contracted. So for you, I'm going to point you towards my IGTV because I actually have a whole probably five or six minute video walking you through that process. So if you check out my IGTV and you scroll down, because I think I posted it sometime last year, there's a whole video on there on how to breathe under a brace. So lucky you, it's already there. All right, so next question is, can I prevent diastasis recti? So if you're asking that from the standpoint of a mom or a person who is either currently pregnant or planning to have babies, what you need to understand about diastasis recti or abdominal separation altogether is that it is a natural process that happens when you are pregnant with babies. So we want those abdominals to stretch, to lengthen, to move and make room for baby. Otherwise, it's gonna be way too tight up in there <laughs> for baby. And it's just, again, a natural thing. So it's not something that we actually want to prevent. So actual diastasis recti, we don't diagnose or, you know, test and make sure that it's truly a separation that is currently still there until postpartum after your fourth trimester after those 12 week period where now we go in after the uterus is shrinked and everything you know fluid wise is kind of reduced down that we assess and see is the diastasis currently present in your postpartum period so if it is there then that's when we want to make sure there's some type of rehab intervention um, and guidance to help you heal it so you actually do not want to prevent diastasis right die and almost 100% of women have it when they're pregnant. So hopefully that answers that question. I know a lot of women don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. We want that to be present, that abdominal separation. All right, next question. I'm doing all the work getting strong, but have this hanging apron. What can be done? So this question is, um, I'm, I'm assuming, is in reference to a C-section shelf. So if this is a mama who has a C-section, then that shelf is the appearance of any additional skin it could be body fat it could be um anything it could be fluid lymphatic fluid anything that is hanging above your incision site so say this is where your incision is which is typically the lower lower pubic area on most women so if that area has never been mobilized it's ne that skin hasn't been moved around like it should after surgery after that incision is healed, then what can happen is the area that is loose above it will hang over that bound area down there. So what you need to do is actual C-section scar mobilization. So if you look on my feed, um, especially around the April area, actually I have a C-section guide. So if you look on my guides on my page, I have where a, I show you how to mobilize your scar. So as long as your incision is completely healed, you've gotten the okay from your doctor to do it and you can physically tolerate it, you want to begin mobilizing that scar to help reduce that C-section shelf appearance. Okay, so again, the other factors like any excess body fat, um, adipose tissue, uh, fluid, things like that, that would have to be addressed separately, but know those things can also contribute to that shelf appearance. All right, exercises to heal diastasis. My page is loaded with them. <laughs> now, what are the specific exercises that you need to heal your diastasis? You would have to work one-on-one -on -one with me or a pelvic floor PT or a postpartum coach to see 
what are the specific exercises you need in order to heal your diastasis. Unfortunately, you can't just look at hashtag diastasis recti and do any and every exercise because that may not be what is needed for your diastasis to heal because some women, diastasis are more open above the belly button, at the level of the belly button, under the belly button. Their rib cage may be also impacted, not impacted, but a part of what we need to look at, their posture, your breathing, so many other factors outside of the actual diastasis itself. So it's going to always pay to see a PT, learn those things, and then get the appropriate exercises for you. But of course, my page has plenty of exercises on there. So if you've seen a PT, you're doing those things already, but you're just looking for additional exercises, you can definitely search my page for plenty of diastasis recti exercises. All right, next, and I think last question for this group is c-section dr in relation to relationship to bladder and urgency issues i love this question i love this question so if we're specifically talking about urgency to pee right i'm not sure if there's any actual leaking that's happening with that but say just the urgency to pee that is a lot of times sometimes uh separate from the actual diastasis or you having a c-section itself unless there's some scar tissue that can be bounding to your bladder because it can um, that you may want to address because scar tissue bounding to that bladder can cause that urgency to pee because then it's also restricting the movement and the mobility of your bladder and putting restrictions on that bladder so it may cause that urgency to pee and kind of giving you that altered feedback if that makes sense sense instead of like normal feedback that you could get from your bladder so that's something to consider if you did have a c-section in reference to dr i find dr is more related to urgency not urgency but incontinence that's more like a stress so meaning like you're not controlling that intra-abdominal pressure well um that is inside of your core canister your belly area you're not managing that pressure well so if you're not managing that pressure well then that can cause leaking into down and on your pelvic, it's not leaking on your pelvic floor, but cause leaking to happen from your vaginal area, okay? So that is something where the two can correlate together, but maybe not always a cause and effect. So just because you have diastasis recti doesn't mean it's causing your leaking issues if you truly have leaking issues, but it could be a lack of an intra-abdominal pressure management that could be causing you to have leaking. So again, you can have urgency issues and it have nothing to do with DR or even your C-section. It just depends on the person. Now, when it does come to urgency, you want to be looking at things like your diet. So like caffeine um, and stimulants and things that can be stimulating your bladder to make you feel like you have urgency. Or it could be triggers like you pull in your driveway and when you pull in your driveway, you think you have to pee. So there's so many different strategies that you want to look at. I want to give them all here because it may not be the exact one that you need. Um, but looking at different strategies that uh, will look at your triggers, will look at your nutrition, um, will look at pressure management, will look at scar tissue, just depending on what is the cause of the urgency in itself. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed our little coffee talk.